This is my Google Pixel 7 Pro that I've been using for the last two months and we're going to have a chat about my experience with this phone. Hi, it's Leo. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 300 subs. And if you do enjoy what you see, be sure to hit that like button and try and aim for 10 likes on this video. So at this point, the Google Pixel 7 Pro has been out for almost nine months and I've been using it for the last two months as my main phone. So I just want to have a chat through how I found that experience with this phone and would I recommend getting this phone or waiting for the Pixel 8 Pro to come out. Just a bit of context, I upgraded from the iPhone 11 and I picked this phone up brand new. When this phone first came out, it was retailing for about £900 and I managed to find it brand new for about 600. So I decided to go with the 128 gigabyte obsidian colored, or basically just the black version of this phone. Ever since I bought this phone, I've been rocking the Caseology uh, orange textured case that I picked up with the phone. And I've also had a screen sticker on and a camera sticker just for a bit of extra protection. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is the design of this phone. I've got no issues with the design and the button placement of this phone. The uh, power button and the volume rockers are very easy to press with your thumb. I do like the placement of the cutout for the front facing camera. I don't think it's very intrusive and it does look quite smart. Overall, I think it's a very well designed phone with a 6.8 inch display, which is very nice coming from an iPhone 11, which has a smaller display. I am a fan of larger phones. So we're next going to move on to the battery life of this phone. So this phone has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that can charge up to 23 watts. So this phone doesn't support fast charging, but with a 23 watt charger, you can charge this phone from zero to full in under two hours, which is okay. So the battery life of this phone has been okay. Coming from an iPhone 11, which I've been using for almost three years, in that phone, the battery had degraded quite a lot. So I was only getting maybe about, about three hours of screen on time. This phone felt like a massive upgrade because I was getting five or six hours of screen on time, maybe even seven. But when comparing this to other phones on the market, I believe the battery doesn't perform amazingly compared to these other phones, such as the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the uh, S23 Ultra. But I do find that this phone gets me through the whole day. So I've not really got any complaints about the battery life, but it's not blown me away with how long it lasts. So this phone has the option to have the display of the phone um, display 1080p or 1440p, which is the full resolution of the screen. I have it on uh, 1080p because I've I've messed around with that setting and I and I really can't tell the difference between the two resolutions. And from what I've read online, the phone supposedly gets 10 to 15% more battery life if you have it on 1080p. Um, so I just have it on 1080p. Another cool thing about this phone's battery is it does support reverse wireless charging. So if you've got some Pixel Buds, let's say, um, you can slap them on the back and charge these Pixel Buds through the phone. You can't talk about a Pixel device without mentioning the camera. So this phone has three cameras, a wide angle, a main camera and a telephoto. So I'm just going to say it straight away. This phone does take very nice pictures. So I'm going to pop some photos up that I've taken with this camera. So the actual image quality of the photos this phone takes, they're amazing. Especially in low light, this does very nice low light photos. The camera app that this phone comes with is very simple and it pretty much always just takes very nice photos. Um, if you've seen pixel photos before, you sort of know what they're gonna look like. They're very contrasty and it likes to bring out the shadows and kind of apply a HDR filter to um, the photos which some people like, some people don't like. I think they do look quite nice if you just leave it on auto and let it do its own thing. So the image quality, as expected, isn't equal between all these cameras. The, the main camera shoots the nicest photos. So I'm now gonna move on to some negatives that I've had with this camera. The first one being the software. The camera app is not as smooth as I would have liked it to be. And I'm mainly talking about when you're switching between the three lenses, um, it's, a bit clunky, a bit laggy um, compared to other phones. And you can see when it switches between the lenses, I feel like the white balance of all the lenses is slightly different. The next thing that I'm gonna touch on, which is a very minor thing. So as I've said before, this has a 50 megapixel main shooter. When you take a picture with this camera, it produces a 12 megapixel photo file. And this is because it merges the pixels together to kind of help improve low light performance. 
but when you shoot in RAW with this camera, it still only produces a 12 megapixel file. This is compared to the iPhone, which when you shoot in RAW mode on the iPhone, it produces a 48 megapixel RAW file. So pixel binning is fine for the JPEG that this phone produces, but if you're shooting in RAW, you should be able to use the full 50 megapixel and it should give you 50 megapixel in that RAW file. And um, the next thing I wanna to touch on is the video. I think the video looks nice from this phone. I don't think it's as nice looking as it could be. What I found in the video is there's a few issues. The main one is that it tries to bring up the shadows, which introduces a lot of noise. In, um, and that's not a problem in photos because it's got the processing power to remove that noise and make the images look nice. But when it's shooting video, it still tries to bring those shadows up, but it obviously it's a video, so it doesn't add as much post-processing to it. And it's unable to remove that noise. So sometimes I've found that the videos coming from this phone are a little bit noisier in the shadows than I would like. And the last thing about this camera, this probably can be fixed with software updates, but I've sometimes found that the autofocus is a little bit hit or miss during video. I've had it not focus on what I've wanted, and that's especially true with the telephoto lens. So that's my opinion on the camera. Overall, I think it's a very nice camera, but there are some things that can be improved. The next thing I'm gonna cover is the performance. This phone runs on the Tensor G2 chip, which is Google's second generation chip that they've put in their phones. Overall, the performance of this phone has been fine. So I don't game on this phone, so I'm not gonna talk from a gaming perspective, but just from a using it for like YouTube, messaging, browsing the internet, it's been absolutely fine. Another concern that people have had about this phone is overheating. This phone has never overheated on me. Uh, it does get slightly warm when it's charging, but that's to be expected. And it's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, so that's plenty for opening as many apps as you want. So I haven't really got any concerns about the performance. And even two months down the line, um, with loads of apps installed, I've not, really, I've not really had any performance issues. Next, I'm gonna to touch on the display. So this has a 1440p uh, 6.8 inch display that's slightly curved at the edges. Coming from an iPhone 11 that has a sub 1080p LCD display, this 120 hertz 1440p OLED is really nice. It gets very bright. It's 120 hertz, so it's very smooth, very responsive. One negative about the screen would be the curves. Two reasons why I'm not a fan of the curves on the display. The first one is that light always seems to be reflecting off of the curves, which is just a bit annoying. Uh, and the second is that it makes it very hard to find a screen protector that will fit on this display. A screen protector required me to put glue on top of the screen, then stick this glass on, just so it would um, go in the right place, because obviously it's harder to put a screen protector when it's curves. Um, and it just cost more, and it was, I know it's gonna be more of an issue to remove, but it is a good job that I did put a screen protector on because I have already got some massive scratches on this screen protector. So this phone also has an in-screen fingerprint reader, which has been good. So yeah, overall I have enjoyed my time with this Pixel 7 Pro. So I guess it's up to you if you wanna wait a couple of months and see what the Pixel 8 Pro has to offer, or if you just wanna grab this phone at a reduced price. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 300 subs. And if you've got any questions about the Pixel 7 Pro, leave them in the comments section and I'll get around to answering them. So yeah, see you in the next video.